What's up? Got a Tucson. Not a bad spinner. All right, let's get this thing out of here. We're going to do check in and check it out. Okay. Yeah, I've had some pretty, pretty cool Tucson's coming through the channel lately. A little bit of oily, oily on it. I mean, look at this thing. Wowie, wowie, wow. I mean, somebody might have been on some Maui Wowie when they designed this one. Look at this thing. Look at the backspacer. Man, look at that designer logo. Ooh, it's got a detent. Wow. That is a snappy detent. Look at that logo, man. What is that? Is that a cactus with an eyeball? You know what that looks like? It looks like the, the dude from Spongebob. What's that? The little, that's always trying to, I can't, I, don't, I can't think of his name, but it looks like that dude with cactus arms. I don't know. Yeah, so anyways, TS-465, 14C-28N, a huge 14C-28N blade. Looks like raw titanium, and then it's got this uh, G10 insert that is, uh, what's that called, like like Damascus G10, Damascus, and it goes all the way through the G10, you can see it here. But wow, is that brightly colored. Pistol grip. I mean, comfortable as all get out, man. That detent is stiff. I mean, wow. It's stiff, stiff going out and stiff coming back. Yeah. Definitely stiff going out. I mean... Blade centered, pocket clip, it's got a decent ramp both ways. It's a little thin, we'll see. But this detent, there's no way I could fail this knife. Impossible. Uh-uh, no chance. Man, I mean, the action's so stiff. Let's just get in it, because I'm going to be looking to see if I can't do something with that. I need to look at the relationship of the lock bar once it's locked up to this scale. It looks like this edge lines up right here. So that's what I'll be looking at that when I take it apart. See how much tension is on there. Yeah, I've I've had some pretty cool Tucson's come through recently and and uh we're just jumping the line. I'm bumping stuff, moving stuff around. You know, these knives are currently out there. And I, I said this before, I need to try to be more timely with some of this stuff because on these two suns, I do catch them as they come out. Not so much on everything else. I mean, like, you know, there's some of my favorite knives. Woo, we got some oil under some of this stuff. Some of my favorite knives from 2023 weren't made in 2023. But by the time I got to them, by the time I checked them in, it was 2023. So, especially, listen to that sound. How cool is that? Especially with these two sons, you know, probably the six leafs, um, the SL-29s. Um, I'm, you know, I pick them up pretty much when they drop. I get after them. Well, I'm trying to be more timely with those videos so that at least y'all that watch my channel, if you're interested in any of these you, you kind of get a heads up, at least from my perspective, uh, while the, the knife is still for sale and fresh. Because I've had that happen, man. They sit on my bench for, you know, two, three months sometimes. And then by the time I review it, and then the review drops, it could be three or four months. Well, then you're watching the video, and you go to buy it, and it's not available. So I'm trying to be more timely with these, so... I've had 
three or four newer models that have dropped that I am jumping a line with and getting them in the rotation pretty quick. And I don't know if you watched that video where I figured out on these scales. I just got to tap them out of there, man. It's amazing how many times I've struggled with these inserts. And all I had to do was just tap them on a bench. Live and learn. Get better. Know something. Learn something, man. Yeah, so anyways, I'm trying to be a little more timely with these newer Tucsons. And this one's no exception. Come on, man. It's because they're oily. They're sucked down on there. There it is. I like this raw titanium, though. I am a fan of stonewashed or bead blasted titanium. The stonewashed, this stuff like this, maybe more so. I like it. I'm not done disassembling here, though. Pocket clips secured on the inside. A G10 serves as an over travel. And it's not giving it up easy. Oh, there's a screw left in it. Calm down, man. There's a hidden under the pocket clip. Take it easy, bro. Getting into the red. Guns and Navarone. Mm-hmm. Reference. Man, I do like this raw titanium like this. Let's go ahead and look at this lockup real quick. Try to remember my reference point. So my reference point was... That was lined up with that when it was locked up. So it's like a millimeter away from that. So nah, I don't think there's much I can do there. I will say that that detent ball is large. It is sticking out of there. Mm -hmm, man, I don't really have any room to mess with that. If I lighten that up, I'm not going to have any lockup. No lockup. All right. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to leave it alone because I already know. Looking at it, I won't get the knife to lock up. It'll fail. So, a little stiff detent. I mean, this may be one of those where it's just got to be run a couple hundred times. We'll see. Man, what a big, tall, flat grind. 14C blade. That is a big one. Huge, big, aggressive backspacer. It's got a frag pattern on it. Look at it. Man, is that nice. Pretty cool. All right. Bunch of little, little parts. Man, I was tempted to mow my grass today, but I don't think so. Full of weeds. Spring has come quick. The weeds were growing a month ago. I think the weeds started growing in January. We got some warm weather in January, and all the weeds said, Oh, let's get busy. And living out where I do, I, you know, ain't no manicured lawn here, man. Try to keep the weeds away from the house. All right, let's put it back together. Get rid of this magnet catching everything. All right, this is the one we want. Look at this stuff. This is cool, man. It's awful brightly colored. I think it had little stubby screws 
holding it together. There's a stubby, there's a stubby, there's a stubby, there's a stubby. So four, four stubbies, I think. Two in each. Mm, seems right to me. These are the same size, these barrel spacers. One. Dos Equis. All right. Quite a pin in the back spacer. There it is. Got pivot pin. Ah, come on. Am I like a clown funny? There it goes. Mm. Okay. Love it when a plan comes together. I am kind of discouraged by that detent, not being able to mess with that. You know, one of the things I can do is I can I can mash this down a little bit. It looks like it's protruding quite a bit. So I could I could try to mash that down and that that might help the action. But boy, that's a last resort thing. You start messing around with a detent ball like that. Not something I want to come out of the gate with. If I have to try to press that in that hole a little better. Cuz it is stiff. All right, let's put this on. There we go. I mean, the stuff coming right now. Oh, there's so many new models. Six Leafs got them. Two Suns got them. All right. I think we're there. No collars, nice little pivot. Get back in the hole. What we got all three of these the same? Those two are the same, that one's a little smaller. I think it's a little smaller. Maybe not. Nah. It's all good. Got uh, three straight sides on this recess on this pocket clip, and it is recessed into that titanium really deeply. So really nice, secure pocket clip that goes under the scale. Oh, man. Let's check this action.
break on that. I could file in a ramp. I mean, I think I'm going to leave it be. I'm just, let me get this pocket clip on there. Come on, man. Goof. Pay attention. I mean, I am going to try to take just the tiniest little bit out of that. I mean, I don't want much, like a 32nd, a 64th of an inch. Just move it. If I can visibly see that it's moved, it's going to be enough. scale now let's go with that we'll see I mean I might have to just get on back in here mm, I don't think I got to put that on yet I think I'm gonna leave that off and I'm gonna I'm gonna load up the knife and check my detent before I go putting all that additional assembly into it. I mean, it made all the difference in the world. I just felt it. I mean, there's like no detent. So the difference between being perfect and not being, you know, being too much or not enough on this knife is, I mean, it's a hair less than the width of a human hair because now I feel like I don't have any detent at all Got a little rock in there let's get that out still got rock mm, still got rock I wonder if I'm not lined up right I mean, it's a million percent better. And I just barely moved it. So now the test is, will it will it stay locked up? I mean, come on, be nice. Yay! Okay, man. Wow, that transformed this knife. Because that, that detent was so strong. I mean, not nice at all. But... I just, I barely moved it, and it completely changed it. And it may be because it's so long that, you know, by the time you get over here, you move it, a, you know, a 64th of an inch. It You know, the pressure change, you know, I don't know, was it a quarter of a pound pressure? I don't, you know, get out a Scoville meter, get it balls on accurate. Another reference. Yeah. Oh, I did it again. <laughs> I mean, come on. Stop it. What the heck? What the heck? Dirty deeds, and they are done dirt cheap. I'm pretty sure that that shorter screw, which is this one, goes in that pocket clip. Because it goes in from back here. Doesn't need to be long. Yep. Now that all makes sense. Now it makes sense. After...
three attempts, four attempts. I don't know. I know it's it's uh, way more than it needed to be. If I had somebody professional here doing this that knew what they were doing. Looking for a stop pin that's in my hand. It's in the scale. All right. Golly, man. I'm going to do it really fast now so I can make another mistake. I mean, I'm going to say that I don't think this knife is everybody's huckleberry because it's I mean it's got interesting ergos I mean design you know what I mean it's different all right we are solid and basically drop shut oh that detent is so much better Mm-hmm. So much nicer. Make sure. Yeah. It's rock solid. Rock Sam. Alright. A little white. Alright, let's run this action, man. Sweet. Can I fail it? Nope, but it's so much nicer. Just need a little tune. Yeah, I mean, wow. Now that it's tuned, I'm going to say that's an A action. It's really nice. And so, I mean, it's only got one method of deployment. I mean, can you... Nah. So you got to use this. It's got good jimping on it, but it I mean, the curve of this, the way that all this lines up, very pleasant, very easy to deploy. Let's talk ergonomics. So it's got this pistol grip, and I mean, you either, you either like it or you hate it, I think. I mean, maybe you could just kind of like it, I guess. You don't have to hate it it's it's definitely different it's odd but it's very comfortable and as far as it being a not so confident confident or very confident grip uh it's i mean it's definitely towards very confident could i come forward with this knife and and be confident very confident that i'm not going to lose my grip and run up over that blade yeah that's a very confident grip i mean really tucked in there the reverse is just as nice, really tucked in, nice platform for the thumb. That backspacer, that frag pattern backspacer, is very grippy, wonderful. It's got a choil for choking up here. I mean, this grip right here, I mean, I don't know. I don't know what you use it for, but it's a good one. Yeah, it's really nice. And it didn't come at the expense of this grip. This grip back here is... I mean, it's good. Pocket clips basically disappeared. Mm -mm -mm. Interesting. Speaking of pocket clip, let's see if that thing runs as good as it looks. Because it looks like it runs really well. Up and over the thick stuff, it does run out of room towards the top. I'm pretty sure the second time I run it, it will run better. Sometimes you just got to get that initial run. Yeah, all the way to the top. Got a little pokey part coming out that matches the, the clip. You know, design-wise, it's pretty nice. That raw titanium, that's a one hand in, one hand out. And in in the thick stuff, it's a dryer clip. It's got good tension here. I don't know that I'd call it a dryer clip. You know, it's got this smooth against this really smooth G10. Uh, it's definitely not a dryer clip. But it's got good tension, good retention. One hand in, one hand out. Pretty nice. It's a good clip. 
could I bend that and put some extra tension on it and make it better for the thinner stuff? Hey, if I was going to like carry this for real, I probably would. I would change the tension on this a little bit, but I don't, I don't know that this is going to run around with me. Um, safety check about some blade contact. Nah, that backspacer covers that whole length of that blade. That tip is recessed down in there. There's no way to get to it. So the tip's good. The clip is good. Uh, and then I'm confident I could put it in my pocket without, you know, incidental blade contact and cut myself. Speaking of cutting, I mean, is this thing as sharp as it should be? Because, man, that big tall blade. I mean, quick drop. Are we out of time? Yeah. Typical long video. I think I got nothing better to do. All right. About three passes per side. And then let's hit this wood. Um, I hit it twice. I felt like I felt something there. Yep. And then we'll take another pass. Or two. And we'll call that good. Boy, it did feel slick. Felt really slick. What do you think? It's amazing what a strop will do, man. Come on. That thing's ridiculously sharp. All right. Well, we only got one thing left to do. I say that, but, you know, I could be lying, too. Uh, TS465 14C28N, price and availability. Where can we find them and how much? Yeah, so this one, like uh, a few others recently, uh, the supply chain issues are, are pretty solid. d has got a couple of these running on live auctions the, the day, you know, today as I'm filming this. And uh, White Mountain Knives has both this one and a colored anodized titanium version. Look at the milling around the edge of this. Wonderful. Definitely aids in the grippiness of this thing. Um, but White Mountain Knives has both versions, the colored version and... Uh, this plain uh, stonewashed titanium version and they're asking for this version a hundred dollars so with the discount code down below dm10 you can pick this up for 90 bucks now d wins got live auctions um, white mountain knives has this uh, for 90 dollars with the discount and then the six leaf seller uh, six leaf uh, SL seller, uh, I'll put a link down below, has this on a fixed sale, buy it now, for, I think it's $84. Uh, like 85 bucks. And it has a best offer on it, which you have five shots. You can make an offer to them, to the six leaf seller that I tagged below, five times. And, uh, I don't know if they want me <laughs> sending everybody there bidding on their stuff, but why not? I mean, if you're going to list it and then put a buy it now price on it, why wouldn't you? Um, I mean, they've sold four. It looks like they had 10 available and they've sold four of these and still have six available at the time of this, this uh, video. So, hey man, I mean, go check it out. If you're interested in one, but is it, is it worth $85? The asking price, which that's the cheapest asking price. Now, could you get it cheaper in a live auction? I mean, that's the thing about a live auction. Maybe, you know, um, because it's going to sell for whatever, whatever it brings. Um, but, but in the end, is this worth $85? I mean, if you can get down on this pit pistol grip, I think it's absolutely worth $85. This is a solid, wonderful, heavy pieces of titanium. Look at that. Look at the excellent blade on this thing. I mean, you know, if I needed a utilitarian pocket knife where I was going to slice, um, man, this thing, what a, what a user this could be. And this choke up, I mean... Yeah, pretty cool. Hey, man, I appreciate you watching. The links will be down below.
Take care.